goodness tonight, pray that you're blessed by the service tonight. Good to welcome all those that are here tonight. Good to welcome those in the business by the live streaming. We're so glad to have you tonight. And we pray that you will just be blessed by the service tonight. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. And don't forget that we stream live on Sunday nights at 6 o'clock, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Right now, we're not having any Sunday school. We just feel like it's the best thing at the present time. But we're here tonight to worship and pray that you worship with us. Be blessed in the service tonight as we all worship together. Praise the Lord. Uh, unspoken request, let God see your hand. Got a lot of requests uh, on that prayer list. And I don't have it right before me, but God sees all of it. Pray for Brother Logan, Sister Colleen, and Sister Nettie's here. Keep praying for her. Uh, several in the church have been sick. We just believe in God to touch all of them. And it's good to see a lot of them back here tonight. We're glad to have you with us tonight in the service. Just pray that you be blessed as we minister and sing. And uh, I'll just offer my request of all as one, all these requests that I have. Uh, my sister Geraldine did call me right before the program tonight in a lot of pain. She had surgery this week, and they found the blood clot that she had and removed it. She's still a lot of pain. And she asked us to pray, so we prayed then. And we'll continue to pray for her, for her husband, Ken, all of my sisters, all my family, all my children and grandchildren. Appreciate you that are here tonight. Amen. Uh, I think we might have did unspoken. Do it again. Give you a chance. To anybody out here got one you'd like to speak tonight? Anybody? Good to have visitors, regular folks, people that haven't been here in a while. It's good to have you. Anybody here have a request tonight? In the middle? What about over here? Amen. Up here, that one. Amen. Appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. Stand to your feet if you would at this time. And let's just worship the Lord together. Amen. So good to have you in the house of God tonight. Praying with us, believing with us, worshiping with us. Worship as we pray together. Amen. Little Tim Prince leads the Lord in prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we do love you tonight. Thank you, Lord.
Father, we felt your presence here tonight already, Lord God. Just know you're welcome here, Lord. Father, we're going to lift you up now and praise you, Lord, with our offerings, our tithes, our gifts, Lord God. We're going to thank you for what you do for us, Lord. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Two of my sisters, Betty and Louise, are here tonight, and I asked them to help me sing this chorus of this song. I'm sure they know it. And uh, they can get Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Jolene asked for this song, not one that we normally sing, it's Marcia's song, amen. But we'll go ahead and uh, try to worship the Lord tonight, pray for us, we try to sing this song, amen. Well, there is coming a day when no heart is shut down.
sing it one more time. What is faith? That's what faith with my Jesus. Yes,
what you love us today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like Marcia, she's saying, Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I'm glad I know how much he loves me. Amen. When I was lost in sin. I praise him. And I thank you for all the blessings on my life. Come here today. I'm still blessed. Yeah, boy. 
Harvey and her family. Charlie <laughs> Summer <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
tonight for a few minutes. We've got to get past the door. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. We pray Thank that you Jesus. touch our hearts and lives tonight. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the good Thank singing you, tonight, Jesus. Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for obeying the Lord tonight. Thank you Amen. for people Jesus. obeying the Lord. Thank you for allowing us to speak these words tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We just thank you for it all. And we know that you're God and we love you, Lord. And we thank you tonight. We praise your name for it all. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord tonight. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. 
Amen. We got to find a way to get past the door. I think a lot of us get to the opportunity. I think we get to, you know, like you remember the man that Philip went down to pray for. He said, when he told him about Jesus, he said, here's water. What does hinder us? I think we get to a place a lot of times where we got the, the doorkeeper standing in front of us, the one that would let us in, the one that would give us our miracle, the one that would save our soul, the one that would heal our body, the one that would deliver us, whatever we need from God, standing at the door, and we fail to walk through the door. we got to get past the door. Amen. The meaning of the word door, I feel, applies to this sermon tonight. It's just an entrance. Amen. It's a way to get in. Amen. We got to find that door. We got to find that way to get in, and we got to get past that door. It is a way or a place to get something that we don't have. Amen. Something on the inside that you and I need. We've opened a lot of doors in our lifetime. Don't know how many times we've been to the food line or the Winn Dixie or somewhere like that just to get a loaf of bread, just to get a gallon of milk. Whatever we need, they got something on the inside that we need and we're not going to stand out denied we've got money in our pocket they ready to sell it to us we walk in and get it it's a little different when it comes to the lord he's re ready to give it to you tonight if you'll just believe amen all things are possible to those that that believe amen it is a place to get something we don't have it is a place there's something on one side that you can't get from the side you own. Somebody hear what I'm saying tonight? Amen. You got to get to the other side. You got to get inside the door. Amen. Amen. It's a place of opportunity. The door represents a place of opportunity. Many people have walked in those doors and got great things of doors of life. Got big loans. Got a lot of groceries. Got uh, help at a doctor's office. Whatever it is, but they couldn't get it in their car. They had to get through the door. And it's the same thing with God. God can penetrate to your car or wherever you're at, your home, if you're watching uh, by the live streaming tonight. We do are glad to have you with us tonight. God can come where you are, but I think the door is a, is a spiritual, maybe metaphor that we need to understand tonight that we got to open it. we got to get through it. we got to get to the other side. There's something just inside the door that God has for us. It is a place of opportunity. In Naaman's case, it was a it was a crossroads, amen. It was a place that he got at. He could do one thing or the other. He could accept what the man of God had sent the word to him uh, that he should receive, or he could just leave as he did and was slowed down by his servants, but he could just leave. You know, he could walk away or he could take it. Many times we get to that place, and it is a crossroads. According to the scriptures, he went the wrong way. Verse 11 says he went away. Verse 12 says he went away in a rage. So he left. He left with a bad attitude. Amen. He didn't leave with his heart right. He didn't leave uh, with, the, with any way to get what he needed from God. If he had kept going, he would have went back the same leper that he came. Amen. And many times we do that. I like a song that says you'll never leave like you came in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe God tonight, you may be lame, uh, tormented, sick, or lame. Tonight, whatever it is, you never leave like you came in Jesus' name if you'll get through the door. The message he got at the door was not what he figured it would be or it wasn't what he wanted to hear. Somebody hear me tonight. That's what happens to us many times. People don't say. Sometimes God don't say what we think he ought to say in our situation. Sometimes the Lord's answer is not the one we had picked out, not the one that we want. And so Naaman did not appreciate uh, you know, the message he got was not what he wanted to hear. He did not appreciate the servant the man of God sent out. He thought the man of God would surely come out to him. Verse 11 says, I thought he will surely come out. I thought he sh would surely come out to me. Amen. I'm telling you, we think too much of ourselves sometimes. Uh, in the Bible, the, the man said, uh, the Lord said, I'll go to your house. He said, I'm not worried that you go to my house. Just speak the word. Amen. And I'm telling you, sometimes it don't take the man of God laying his hand on you. Sometimes it don't take you physically doing nothing. But mentally, we got to get through the door. we got to get wherever we need to get to get what we need from God. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. He said, our rivers are better than Jordan. Amen. So he complained. He didn't like the choice of rivers. Amen. What he really didn't comprehend was it wasn't. The servant or Elijah's choice, it was what God said. 
And we must do it the way God says to do it, whatever it is in any situation. I feel there are many that get to this door in faith, get to this door by faith and never get past the door. Amen. Never get, get faith that if I can just touch him, I'll be made whole. Get faith if I can just hear the word preached one more time. If I can just get where there's a prayer line where somebody's praying for the sick, I believe I'll get my miracle. I'll get my healing. You get to that place and you walk away without the miracle. I can hear you tonight. It may be the preacher's fault. It may be your fault. But I can tell you one thing for sure. It's not. It's not God's fault that right. we don't get what we need from God. We need to get his blessings and he wants us to have them. Consequently, they never know what they could have had and leave just sadly wondering what might have been. Amen. That's the way we do. When we get to the door, don't go in. I've been to business places before. Changed my mind about going in. You know, I think, well, I don't believe I want to go in there. I don't want to go in that crowd. Look in there. I've been to a lot of restaurants and the crowd was too long. The waiting list was too long. And I wouldn't even go in. Amen. Well, all I could do is just wonder how that food would have tasted in my mouth if I went through and suffered the line and stayed the line and got it. We fail to do that sometimes, and we especially fail to do that with the will of God. Amen. Uh, we just go away wondering what might have been. Naaman was sick, but he wasn't out of his mind with pain. He knew where he was. Amen. Amen. He knew. I believe with all my heart, he knew that he was standing at the door of the house of a man of God. He knew that there was somebody in there that could help him. He come all that way, packed those wagons with gifts to give him for the miracle and, and took service with him and done everything right to get there but was about to leave without his miracle. The Bible said he left, he went away. And another verse says he went away in a rage. So he was leaving. He had had enough. He was mad. Amen. He didn't like it. Amen. Praise the Lord. He was standing at the door at the house of a man of God. Verse 11, he said, I thought he will, because, but because he didn't work like Naaman thought, he was ready to abort his mission of getting his healing, getting his leprosy gone in his life. Had it not been for servants, he would not have ever got his healing. I thought it was interesting. I looked today, I knew there were several, I thought there were five or six servants involved, but listen, uh, n number one servant was Naaman's wife, M Naaman's wife's maid. In verse two, she was there telling her, I don't believe he has to be sick. I know there's a man of God that can touch him and I've heard about him. Yeah, that's right. And so uh, the Bible says the second thing in verse four, that one went in and told him. So there was two servants there involved at that point. And then the third thing, he said the letter carry in verse 5 was a servant. I don't know if he was a UPS man or a FedEx or just a mailman or just somebody God found along the way to get the message in there. But he was a servant. He was going in there on a mission. Amen. He was a letter carrier in this case. The fourth one I saw, Elijah sent to the king a messenger in verse 8. Amen. And he, he is just now at the door. His messenger went in there. He is just at the door, Elijah sends a messenger, number five, uh, in verse 10, back to him. Verse six and seven, if you notice this, it said, name it servants with an S. So there was at least two of them. If there was two of them, that would make seven, amen. And that's God's number of completion. And I believe they were used of God. And if it hadn't have been for them, he would never got his miracle. But now after the servants talked to him, after seven servants, at least seven are used of God to get this man of God uh, to pray for this man that was a good man. The Bible says he was a captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, honorable because of by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he had a problem. He was a leper, amen. And he was standing at the door of the opportunity to get his leprosy clean. Somebody Say amen tonight. I believe that. And now he's headed to Georgia. Jordan, it is a good thing. God wasn't ready to abort his mission. Elijah was ready to give up on his mission. Abort it. Just let it go by the wayside. They done make me mad. I'm going home. I'm going to go give this money I've got 
to give them all these raiments and things that I brought to give them. I'm going to give to somebody else. I'll show them I'm leaving mad. I'm telling you, I can't think of the times that and it's sad to say, but in the 50 years I've been a Christian, in 40 plus years I've been pastoring, that I've seen people go out the door mad, angry, and probably left the door, never did get the miracle that they could have got if they had humbled themselves. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, My people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and repent and turn from their wicked We I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. And he still does that today. That same rule applies. But you might be ready to quit, but God ain't ready to quit on you. God's got something for you. God has good things in store for you. I believe that with all my heart. So don't quit on God. He won't quit on you. It's a good thing here that God wasn't ready to abort this mission. I'm glad Naaman hadn't forgot the waters that Elijah had sent him. Verse 17 says he dipped himself seven times. Verse 14 says he dipped himself seven times. Seven times. Completion. Total obedience. That's what it means. And I think that was the reason that God led him to do it seven times. Anything less would have been partial obedience and it would have become disobedient. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Anything less than seven would be disobedient and it would disqualify him from the blessing or for the blessing that God had him. I think sometimes we try to do things similar to what God asked. Sometimes we try to do things, uh, you know, as compared to what God asked. But I believe God is a detailed God. Amen. When he gave instructions in the old Bible, in the oh, new Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, he made them explicit what they must do. He told the children of Israel to go around Jericho seven times. And on the seventh day, go seven times for a total of 13 times. I don't believe the walls even shook a little bit till they got around those 13 times. That's I believe right. you got to do yeah. what God said the way God said it. I ain't no doubt we used to sing. I know he will do what he said he would do. And I think we could add to that if we'll do what he said for us to do. Amen. Yeah. God will do what he said he would do if we'll do what he said for us to do. Amen. I believe that's important. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of you wonder right now why you haven't got the blessing you desire. Have you done something right? But you haven't done it all right. You've done something right, but you haven't done it all right. You had to obey everything God had told you. I feel like I'm talking to somebody right now, either here in this sanctuary or by the live streaming that can think of something right now. Well, God told me to do this, and I didn't do it. God told me to do that, and I didn't do it. You know what you got to do? You got to go back and do what God told you to do. Amen. Because God won't negotiate uh, your miracle or your healing it will come his way in his time just like he wants it to come you got to hold on to God that can't never fail hallelujah if you won't it, it won't work when God says seven six won't do amen when God says seven five four three nothing else will work eight's unnecessary amen just do what God says amen and it'll work every time Many times, like Naaman, we're willing to be God as far as it makes sense to us. As long as it makes sense to us, it sounds reasonable. We dare not to be different. We dare not to uh, get to the place that we're going to have to do something, that we're going to have to explain to somebody why we've done that. I'm telling you, you don't need no explanation if you just obey God. Amen. Just obey Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're willing to obey God as long as it doesn't make us look weird or goofy. If it doesn't embarrass us, if it doesn't do something to us that's against our better judgment, amen, that we'll go ahead and go along with it with God. We're willing to obey God as long as it's convenient, as long as it's comfortable. If you're going to receive the blessing God has for you, I believe it'll cost you something. Somebody say amen. I believe it's more than money that God requires of us. I believe it is obedience. Amen. I believe the Bible says, I know the Bible says, and I believe it that to obey is better than sacrifice. Amen. So it will cost us obedience. Somebody hear me tonight. It will cost you your pride. Somebody hear me. I believe you're going to have to get rid of that pride. I don't believe there's no place in the kingdom of God for the kind of pride that blocks us from getting miracles and getting our answers from God that we need from God. We've got to get rid of foolish pride. One songwriter said, get rid of your foolish pride. It will cost you your plans. Amen. 
Uh, you can't do it the way you want to do it. To have Jesus born of a virgin Mary, she had to change her plan. To have Jesus born of a virgin Mary, Joseph had to change his plan. I'm telling you, if it will cost us our plan sometime. What we preconceived our idea to be, it will cost us our feelings and our emotions. Somebody hear me tonight. It will cost you uh, going down the road, uh, you know, with your feelings on your shoulder. You can't do that. It'll cost you your emotion. Every dip in Muddy Jordan was stripping Damon of his pride. Amen. It was. I'm sure. I know how the devil operates, and he's the same devil. I'm glad I can boast, and, and I preached on one of the TV programs yesterday that I take that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I'm sad to report that the devil's the same too. The same old tricks he tried on men of God in the Bible. He's still pushing those tricks today. Somebody say amen. Right. And I know how he operates. And I can tell you, I, I can tell you that I'm sure it doesn't record it. Everything that God done can't be recorded in the Word of God. The Word, I read it today, John said it wouldn't contain the books. There's a lot that God did, and we'll never know about till we get home. But I can tell you that how the devil operates. And I can imagine when he went down the first time, the devil was first to tell him, you are making a fool out of yourself. You are looking silly to everybody looking on. You're the, uh, the captain of the host of the mighty king. And you out here acting like a nut. You ought to be ashamed. You're not going to get nothing but death out of this. You're going to get sick from all this muddy water getting in your sores. You need to quit right now. While you're ahead, maybe you won't die. And about that time, it goes under again. Somebody say amen. And I believe when he went under again, I believe that the devil spoke to him again. You're going too far. You're going too far. He knew he was going too far. He knew if he dared to do it five more times, that the devil would lose and he would get his healing. And that's just what happened. But he went under the third time. Amen. Ducked himself. Didn't have nobody baptized him. Bible said he ducked himself in there seven times. Fourth time. No change in his being, but I'm sure the devil heated his, his argument up a little bit. I'm telling you all to quit now. You all to be ashamed. I'm telling you you're not going to do nothing but kill his crazy self out here in this muddy water doing what the man of God told you to do. You better quit it. You better stop it right now. Amen. But he did. He kept on fifth time, sixth time, seventh time. And we know the story. One thing I admire about Naaman was he was a finisher. He understood commitment. He understood perseverance. Once he made up his mind to do it, it was total commitment. I'll tell you, I think God needs somebody like that today in America. I think God needs people like that in the church. I think God needs people like that in the pulpit. I think he needs people like that in the pews, amen, that'll say, I've committed my future to him. I'm going to hold on to him. I've committed everything I own is up to him. All my eggs are in one basket, amen. If, if it don't make it, it ain't going to make it. I got all of my hope in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow may never come. Right now, all my hope is in Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what we need in the church. Meaning women who are not just here to get blessed, but they're committed to the work. They're here to see it through. They're faithful. You can count on them to finish what they start. No matter what the cost, no matter how long it takes, no matter uh, what people might say about them, uh, they've thrown in it to win. Amen. God in it to win. Hallelujah. I come in this morning and, and the Spirit changed my mind. We sung another course before we preached, but I had on my mind to just sing to the people tonight. I'm bound for that city. God's holy what city. No matter how rough may be the way, no matter how oft I stop to pray, I'm bound for that city on that evergreen shore. I'm telling you, if you don't have that kind of faith, you're going to be falling by the wayside. Amen. And no matter the cost, no matter how long it takes, perseverance wins the prize. God never said anything or everything. God never said everything would be easy. God never said that it wouldn't be any rain. God never said that you wouldn't have to fight the very pits of hell sometime. 
the scripture say teaches us that we do the songwriter said though all hell is sell man I shall not be moved God never said you wouldn't under, you would understand it all God never said you wouldn't be criticized or persecuted God never said there wouldn't be delay but perseverance always wins the prize let me say it again when God says seven six just won't do somebody say amen I'm, telling, I'm glad we ought to admit that our six ain't nothing when God desires seven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Seven is the number of completion, as I said, is the number of maturity, of harvest. Seven is where man's obedience and God's power intersects. Hallelujah. Somebody hit me today. It's where it comes together. Man's obedience brings on God's power, and we walk away shouting the victory. Somebody say amen. That's what happens. Amen. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. If Naaman were to have stopped at three, four, five, or even six, nothing would have happened. There would have been no manifestation of the power of God. Whosoever he saith unto you, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That's what Jesus' his mother said at the marriage supper of Cain of Galilee. Don't think about it. Don't pray about it. Don't talk about it. Don't even sing about it. Just do it. Somebody say amen. amen. And when you do, your natural human finite ability will intersect with the supernatural infinite power of a miracle working God and you will see the glory of God. Somebody say amen. amen. When you just do it, amen. Just do it. Somebody say just do it. Just operate on faith and whatever God says, do it. I've done things a lot of times and talked to people and told people when I'm doing it. I don't know why I'm doing this, but God told me to do it. I've sung a lot of songs that I didn't know why I was singing them. I preached a lot of messages that I didn't think was exactly what I ought to be preaching that night. But if God said it, I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. His word is truth. Amen. What he says, it'll come to pass like he wants it to. Just do it in Jesus' name and see the glory of God. I'm reminded of several scriptures, and I'll give you two or three as I begin to close. Jesus told them uh, this is human ability of, of obedience that we got to do. Jesus told them at Lazarus' grave in John chapter 11, take away the stone. You think the man standing there that's fixing to cry out to him, Lazarus come forth and a dead man bound in grave clothes is going to come out some way or another. I don't think he was walking. I don't think he was coming out like we normally would. Uh, if they'd be a normal to would, if I was laying there and he'd speak to me, get up, I'd just walk up. Amen. But he was bound in grave clothes. And he come forward. I don't know if he bounced out there or how he got out there. But he came. Amen. But he gave them a petition first. Yes. Move the stone. Amen. Take the stone away. Uh, the supernatural ability of God. Lazarus come forth. There's a word from God for every situation in your life. Through your obedience, your faith will come together with the power of God. And you will see the manifestation of God's power in your life when you just give him the faith. Amen. That's when faith begins. Amen. There is a word from God for every situation. There are examples. The widow woman. I'm gathering sticks to make a small cake for my son and myself. And I'm going to eat it and die. And the man of God said, make me one first. And your meal barrel will not empty. And your crew will not run dry. I'm telling you, sometimes we've got that door right there. That was her door. Amen. I'm telling you, it wasn't a physical door, but it was her door. As he stood there with that little bit of meal and two sticks and was going to make that for her son and they were going to die, I don't think it mattered what size she made. The prophet said, just make me a little cake first. Amen. I believe it could have been a big around as a quarter. But if she had faith enough to bring him something first, God promised him that he supply her need. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that's the truth in our life tonight. Somebody hear me. Amen. Hallelujah. She obeyed the word of the Lord from the prophet and was sustained, sustained through the famine. The widow woman of 1 Kings 4, her husband died, left her in debt. The prophet said to her, bar empty vessels, not a few. I believe she went around and barred every one she could find. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your little pot of oil and pour them, setting aside that which is full. 
She obeyed the word of the Lord through the prophet and went into supernatural multiplication and provision. Those bottles just begin, uh, that one bottle just begin to pour, amen, into a big one, into another one, into another one, into another one. It didn't take long for people to figure out that she's got more oil than she started with. Amen. I'm telling you, if you'll just go with God, you'll have more oil than you started with. You'll have a better supply when you leave than you came with. Somebody hear me tonight. Oh, I believe that. Amen. I believe the word of God. Amen. I'm preaching. This is not something I read in a fairy tale. Not something that I dreamed about. This is the infallible word of God Amen. that we base everything we believe in on the word of God. When the Bible talks in Thessalonians about the rapture of the church, he said, for this we say by the word of God. What I'm telling you tonight is by the word of God. It's been proven. It works time and time again in history and time and time again in our lives that nobody ever hears about. Oh, yes. But we know it works. It yes. works. It Amen. works. You do it. And it works. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The wedding of King of Galilee I've already mentioned. They ran out of wine. The prophet Jesus said, feel the water pots. Amen. Amen. I love that story. That's one of my favorite stories in the Word of God. Not because he turned the water to wine, but because of the way it happened. And then something was said later when the king said, where'd y'all get this wine? Y'all say the best to last. And uh, they didn't know where it come from. But there's a scripture. I may be paraphrasing a little bit, but it says those that fill the water pots knew. Those that fill those water pots knew where it come from. I tell you, I know where my help comes from. I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that I've committed unto him. Against that day, me and my wife and my children, my grandchildren, my household, all that pertain to me. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. I believe that. Hallelujah. 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 It didn't make any sense to them. It was a difficult job. Job they had obeyed. And their obedience that moved with the power of God and the water became mine. I don't know the miracle you stand in need of tonight. Hallelujah. But I know all of you need, all you need is a word from God. One word from God can turn the situation completely around. I'll close with this last example. The prophet Ezekiel looked at a valley of dry bones, a hopeless situation. But God gave him a word, prophesy prophesy. That was the word of the Lord to Ezekiel. Prophesy upon these bones. He could have cried. He could have prayed. He could have fasted. He could have sung every song he knew. He could have started dancing all over the place and nothing would have happened. All he had to do was obey God and prophesy to these bones. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he did that. Amen. That was the word of the Lord to Ezekiel. Prophesy to these bones. He could have done anything else and nothing else would have worked. Amen. But when he obeyed and began to prophesy, even though it looked impossible, even though it felt ridiculous, even though his natural sense and no doubt was arguing with him, that he going to do no good. Them bones are dry. They're not just dry. They're very dry. They ain't got no flesh on them. They ain't got no sinews on them. They ain't even in the same place. There's a leg bone over there and a hip bone over there. I mean, they've been scattered. They're not even in the same place. I don't think they were because it says they begin to come together. Amen. I believe nobody didn't get nobody else's leg bone. The right leg bone came to the right knee bone. Amen. 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 Somebody hear me. God did a miracle. Amen. Yes. Because they obeyed God and prophesied. Amen. Amen. He began to prophesy. There was a manifestation of the power of God going back to the music. And bones began to come together. Bone to his bone, sinew and muscles, skin became begin to come on these bones. And finally, the breath of God filled them. And they stood upon their feet, a mighty and great army. Somebody say amen. amen. I've obeyed the Lord tonight. I hope you have. And if you have, I hope you don't quit now. We're about to give an altar call. Amen. amen. We're about to give you a chance to open that door and find what God has for you tonight. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a manifestation of the power. Finally, the breath came into those bodies. Feel them. Don't get something to sing. I know y'all know something goes to this message. Just sing something. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.
Somebody get y'all a microwave where you can have 10. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bread filled them. Amen. And they stood upon their feet a great army. Turn this one back on for me just a minute. Amen. Because one man died to obey God. One man stepped out and said, I will be God. One man made a difference. One man in God makes a majority tonight. Amen. One man in God that makes a majority. I said it again. Hear me tonight. I said one man in God makes a majority. It may look like you outnumber, but that's man's eyes. Amen. You may look like there's no way it's going to happen. But I wish somebody would stand up tonight and say, I come to hear this tonight. I come to get this miracle tonight. I come to believe God that God would do what God has promised me. He would do what God said he would do in my life. I don't believe it. Are you at the door tonight? I want to tell you what I think you ought to do. Go on through it. Amen. Just go on through that door and see what God has. Watch out for yourself. Worship.
Wednesday night. 